Mm. Yeah. Another one. Hmm. Yep. Man, this town has changed. Yeah. About damn time. Agrimax and West River Ag have been in the winter area for a combined total of nine years. We offer top-of-the-line services and inputs such as chemical, seed, fertilizer application, spraying, and agronomy services with a certified crop advisor on staff. We are a full-service business that is locally owned and operated. We look forward to continuing service to the ag community and cannot wait to help you with all your agricultural needs. Agrimax, shaping the future of ag. Mead Lumber is 100% employee owned. Mead Lumber is your source for building materials. Whether your plans are for new construction or updating your existing home or barn, Mead Lumber provides the know-how and the materials you need. Lumber, steel, roofing, siding, drywall, windows, doors, and so much more. Start to finish, Mead Lumber has what you need and want for your project. Mead Lumber is your hometown lumber yard. Stop in and see what Mead can do for you. 102 North Main Street in Winter. The Insurance Center in Winter is an independent insurance agency affiliated with many fine companies representing all types of insurance. They're able to provide you with a no obligation comparison of your auto, home, business, crop, farm, life and health insurance needs. Since they have access to so many companies, they have the ability to offer you the best possible coverages at the most competitive rates. For all of your insurance needs, it's the Insurance Center in Winter, White River, Platte, Burke and Valentine. For over 130 years, Bank West has earned long-term customer relationships by continually adapting to current customer needs while never losing touch with its South Dakota roots. With all our branches and our corporate offices firmly rooted in South Dakota, you can count on Bank West for solutions and service backed by hometown values. We've been there and we'll be there. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Learn more at bankwest-sd.bank. Member FDIC. Give it off to see it gliding to the basket. Out to free Jay Hayes. Good. And Eric Lemon wants to stop the music. Explore the 2023 Lincoln Navigator at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Every time you approach your Lincoln, you'll receive a re-carpet welcome. Twin turbocharged 3.5 V6 engine with auto start stop technology, you'll travel confidently with technology that meets all your needs. Now you can get the 2023 Navigator for 5.9% at 72 months. Stop in to see the full vehicle lineup at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Capital City Ford in Pierce, South Dakota. Computers and more, located at 27786 311th Avenue, is obviously your computer sales and repair in winter. The more is so much other than you can imagine. We are your local outlet for Winter Warriors sports apparel. We do screen printing and embroidery for your purple and gold attire. Stop in and check out all our gear on hand for you to wear at the next game. Call us at 842-9057 and see how we can design your company logo on all types of clothing. And remember, thanks for keeping it local. Shirley's Diner is located at 142 East 2nd Street in Winters, South Dakota. Come meet Martha 1 and Martha 2 and their friendly, courteous staff. Shirley's Diner is open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Breakfast is served all day and check out the Shirley's Diner Facebook page for all their daily lunch specials. All meals are made fresh and homemade every day. If you can't make it to the diner, they'll deliver. Just call 605-842-3903. Shirley's Diner serves customers from near and far and are a proud supporter of all school activities on Sports Ticket Live. It's easy to remember, there's nothing finer than Shirley's Diner. Winter Dental, located at 911 Golden Prairie Drive, is proud to provide Winter and the surrounding area with high quality, high tech, patient centered dentistry. Dr. Brad and the entire staff 
including hygienists Michaela Smith and Sierra Hansen, are honored to have the opportunity to serve the good people of Winter and the surrounding area with gentle, compassionate, and high-quality dental services. For information on all the services they can provide you or to make an appointment, please call 605-842-1793 or go to winterdentalclinic.com. We connect people. Have been for a hundred years or so. How we get that done? Well, that won't always be the same. But why we connect people? Not in a million years is that ever gonna change. We didn't build the communities that made South Dakota. No, we just brought them together. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. Hmm. Yeah. Another one. Hmm. Yep. Man, this town has changed. Yeah. About damn time. Schrader Electric and Control, located in Winter, is available for all your electrical service needs. With close to 40 years of experience, Brian and his crew can take care of all your electrical projects, residential or commercial. Schrader Electric works with new construction, remodels, and new additions. Call Brian at 605-840-8913 to get a quote or schedule your next electrical service. Schrader Electric and Control is a proud sponsor of the schools on the Live Ticket Network. When it comes to vehicle maintenance, we know you have a lot of options, but it can be hard to find an honest, reliable auto repair shop. That's where we come in, Hometown Automotive, committed to providing our customers with honest, quality service at a reasonable price. We use years of training and experience to provide you with the best car care possible. Hometown does oil changes, tune-ups, and computer diagnostics. We sell tires, batteries, and Schaefer products. We install engines, trannies, starters, water pumps, brakes, and much more. Call us at 842-1722 and let our experience be your advantage. Advantage. Meyer Ag is your Bex Hybrids seed dealer located in Winter, South Dakota. Meyer Ag is a family-owned company specializing in seed consulting and zone-based variable rate that services South Central South Dakota. Contact Trace Meyer at 605-842-5458 to learn more about Bex Hybrids and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Meyer Ag in Winter, South Dakota is a proud supporter of all youth athletics and activities. No job is too big or small for the gang at h and Electric in winter. Whether it's a simple task around the house, remodel, new addition, or new construction, we provide residential, commercial, and industrial heating, cooling, or electrical work in winter and the surrounding area. We handle it all. Call 605-842-1117 for service or more information on your next project, big or small. h and Electric is your authorized dealer for train heating systems, too. Good luck in today's event. h and Electric is a proud supporter of all area student athletes and activities on Live Ticket TV. At American Family Insurance, we help protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after your dreams. For auto, home, business, and life, contact us today. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance, Life Mutual Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Stop by your hometown grocer, County Fair, now in Winter and Platte. Same friendly faces with a brand new name. County Fair is a fourth generation family owned business based in South Dakota. They offer friendly service and the freshest food at great prices. County Fair carries premium certified Angus beef, locally grown produce and much more. Shop County Fair in Winter and Platte, the friendliest store in town. 
Wow, Bill, you're walking so much better. What did you do? Well, I got so tired of the pain and nearly fell. And one of my friends recommended physical therapy at Winter Physical Therapy. And you know what? My back also stopped hurting. Huh. So how did you get started? My doctor wrote me a referral, but that's not always needed. Turns out you always have a choice where you want to go. So why did you choose Winter Physical Therapy? I love to support our locally owned small businesses. And quite frankly, they give great personalized care. Winter Physical Therapy. Exceptional care. Elevate Agronomics is now added to Cal Baz Grow to our seed lineup. Along with brands like LG Seeds, Sakota, and Westbred, we can find the best hybrid to fit your farm. When it comes to your chemicals, we can finance many of your chemical needs for 1.9% while still offering full cash discounts. Elevate is also your precision planting dealer with a meter stand and an expert on staff to help get your row units and planting equipment ready for this upcoming season. Give us a call or check us out at elevateagronomics.com. Elevate Agronomics, reach new heights. Shop local with Burke, Gregory, and Winter Building Centers. Your hometown hardware stores specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crews at the building centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top of the line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook or shop online anytime at buildingcentersd.com. Whether you are pregnant or planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. Grossenberg Implement and John Deere have you covered to help you move forward for 2024. Now through May 31st, 2024, Grossenberg is offering you 10% off select sprayer parts. We know you spend a lot of time caring for your operation, and they're your partner. This promotion includes common repair parts like flow meters, hydraulic cylinders, and valves. For complete details to get 10% off select sprayer parts, go to Grossenberg.com or any Grossenberg Implement location. It might be time for you to strongly consider leasing bulls from Jorgensen Land and Cattle. Here's Cody. We'll get the bull to your place. Generally, we'll, we'll be able to get the bull picked up when you're done with them. So there's no reason for you to have a bull around your place for, you know, nine, ten months of the year that you don't need him. Um, he's just costing you money. He's eating feed. He's tearing up your corral. So so there's just no reason for it. Uh, it's, it's become very popular just, just in the fact that it's, it's convenient for people. Call 1-800-548-BULL. Agriculture is like no other business which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. There's a lot of uncertainties in farming and ranching today, but one thing is certain. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell are your crop and livestock insurance specialists. Statewide agents have a background in agriculture and work hard to provide growers and ranchers with risk management plans and insurance coverage that fits their business needs. From hail insurance, livestock revenue protection, to multi parallel crop and revenue insurance, Statewide will help you with the right decisions. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell. Locally owned, your dependable partner in crop and livestock protection and equal opportunity provider. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller & Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if auto owners make sense for you. Agrimax and West River Ag have been in the winter area for a combined total of nine years. We offer top-of-the-line services and inputs such as chemical, seed, fertilizer application, spraying, and agronomy services with a certified crop advisor on staff. We are a full-service business that is locally owned and operated. We look forward to continuing service to the ag community, 
and cannot wait to help you with all your agricultural needs. Agrimax, shaping the future of ag. Early seed season is here. Litaw Seed carries Hefty brand corn and beans for their genetics, technology, and treatments. Hefty's corn has been very drought tolerant and an excellent yielding. We also have Enlist and Extendiflex soybeans for your choice in herbicide. With Dynagro, we're at the top of the South Dakota field trials for their sunflowers and milo. And with Millbarn, we're the leader in grass, cover, crop, and forages. Call 605-840-4591 for Litaw Seed, your source for corn to cover crops, soybeans to sunflowers, and all forages. That's it. The Winter Advocate is the exclusive newspaper of Trip County, serving Winter, Cologne, and the surrounding communities. Each Wednesday, you'll find the latest in state and local news, sports, job openings, classifieds, and all legal public notices. Call 842-1481 or stop down to 125 West 3rd to start your subscription today. Don't forget our deadlines, Friday at 5 p.m. for The Advocate and 12 on Fridays for The Rocket. The Winter Advocate is a proud partner of Winter Warriors Live and wish the Warriors and Lady Warriors success all this season. Easy Entrees is a locally owned business that specializes in take and bake entrees. We feature an assortment of frozen ready to bake options for you to choose from. All of our recipes are made with care and fresh ingredients so that you can have a healthy and delicious meal, allowing you to have more quality time with your family. Our menus change monthly. Just click on our banner ad at the sports ticket page to see our current monthly menu. Remember, dishing up dinner is as easy as picking up the phone and dialing 842-EASY for easy entrees. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo, who will take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know FarmCo locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platte, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at farmcosd.com. FarmCo, Farm feeding, feeding your, your future. future. Core Cares helps individuals stay at home by offering caregiving, nursing, and medical alert systems in over 55 communities in South Dakota. Specializing in tasks like bathing, meal prep, and medication setups, our well-trained staff delivers exceptional care. We invest in our team through customized training and comprehensive benefits. To learn more about job opportunities or services, visit our website at corecares.com. Core Cares, proudly serving our community. Core Cares helps. Excellent. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl as we get underway here on this Monday evening, where it'll be Royals taking on the Plant Honkers coming to town, making the trip over west as we get underway. Of course, it's, if you've been outside today, you know it's a windy one, winds gusting in. Uh, but otherwise, weather beautiful, nice 70 degrees in town. The most South Dakota thing you can say is if it wasn't for the wind, it really wouldn't be too bad as we get underway with the club ball season here for Winter Warriors Live coverage. It was a 2-1 to one victory. We had some internet issues up here at Leahy Bowl in the press box. Couldn't get that first game done, but it was the Royals defeating the Bronx in a nice walk-off fashion. And so as we get underway here with game number two, first pitch going to be in there for a called strike number one. And we'll set the defense for the Royals here in a second when we get the opportunity. And the second pitch going to be fouled off quickly 0-2. That one's going to be grounded weakly over to third, thrown across the diamond in time for the 5-3 put out. That's Halligan over at third making that play. And Parker Bailey will be retired, the leadoff man for the Honkers. Due up next will be Tanner Dyke playing, catching actually, for the Honkers this evening. Of course, if you're also joining us, decided to flip the JV and varsity game around with a little bit of worry of weather, so... Of course, this is the varsity action with JV to follow. Dai going to take the first pitch, and that one's going to be fouled up and out of play for strike number one. So 
So it's the third pitch at the at bat. Gonna miss low and away. This count will move to two and one. Setting the defense for the Royals here. It's Brandis on the bump. Phillip behind the plate. Morehart over at first. Fisher at second. Over at third is Halligan. Shortstop is Barfus. Outfield from left to right going to be Schroeder, Olsen, and McKenzie. As the count moves to three and one, Brandis will deliver home, and that one will miss outside. And that will be a walk, bringing up the shortstop, Joey Foxley. As the first pitch to Foxley going to be in there for a called strike number one. That one fouled back and into the screen takes our count to 0 2 to Foxley. As Brandis will check the runner, come set and deliver. That one going to run high and in. Fox is going to watch that one. Takes her count to one and two. As Brandis will start his windup again, come home, and that one's going to plunk off Foxley's helmet into the screen, and it'll put runners on first and second now for the Honkers. Bringing up next, the cleanup hitter, Caden Oberbrockling. Oberbrockling, big man, going to be doing the pitching today for the Honkers. Brandis will come set, deliver. That one going to miss outside to Oberbrockling. The lefty a little bit different for Brandis. Had been missing towards that outside Part of the plate to the right-handed hitter is now going to have to adjust and find it back in. So that one's grounded up the middle. Going to be flipped over at second in time. They will get the runner at second, not the lead runner. And as we get runners on the corner now with two away. Looks like. We'll see a courtesy runner coming in and do up next for the Honkers. Looks like it's going to be the left fielder, Kramvita. Kramvita. First pitch to Kramvita. Going to be called strike. As the second one going to be fouled off as Kramveda takes the sh nice little handle shot there. Runner was moving there, as you can see, and we'll see an 0-2 count with two away and a chance for the Royals to come away scoreless here in the top half of the first. And that one's going to get behind Kramveda. Pitch going to be there in time. Phillips not going to be able to get that one back in quite quick enough. And so runner will score. So that one going to miss outside. Count's going to go to a two apiece. <laughs> so with deuces wild, Phillips going to take a nice quick shot out to his pitcher and try to calm Brandis 
down and get out of this inning here. And so with the strikeout, it's going to be Platt coming up with one run on no hits, no errors, and two left on. We'll say one left on. That's the proper statement. We'll take a quick break here, hear from our sponsors, and be back in 60 seconds with more coverage from Leahy Bull on WinterWarriorsLive.com. Welcome back to the Meyer and Tax Service. Located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. Do you have a lucky for us? Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl. As we get underway here, it's going to be the bottom of one due up for the Royals. It's going to be. Olson Barfus Phillips with Halligan cleaning things up. So Olson digs in. We'll set the plat defense in a second when we got the opportunity. Instead, the first pitch gonna miss. It will be ball number one to Olson. The count goes to two and one to Olsen. And it'll move to three and one as that one misses. And Olsen will draw the leadoff walk. Bringing up the shortstop Aiden Barfus next up to the dish. Setting the plant defense. As Barf is going to take a look at strike number one. It's over Brockling on the bump. Thigh behind the place. Christensen over at first. Brick at second. Bailey at short or third. Foxley at short. Kramvita in left. Bailey in center. And Kuiper in right. As the count evens up to Barfus as that pitch misses low. Pickoff attempt over to first. Gets Olsen in a rundown. He's going to try to make it to second. And he's not going to get in under the tag. So he will be retired for out number one. A little aggressive on the base pass. And so now Barfus will be looking to restock the pond, you could say. Trying to get another base runner on board for the Royals. As Oberbrockling winds, delivers, catches the inside half, and count will go to one and two. 
The wind, wish I can give you a set direction. It looks like at this point, kind of coming in from that northeast blowing southwest. Nice breeze across, but the flag's been moving a lot out here. So that one's going to miss high and even things up to Barfus at 2-2. Two and two. Barfus going to put that one in play, but it's going to drift foul. So count will remain at two and two. So as Oberbrockling comes set, this delivers again to Barfus. That one going to miss outside, and we'll see if payoff pitch on the way. So Oprah Brockling will do it again. Wine delivered. Barfus going to get a piece of that one, take it out towards right, it's up in the air, and it's going to be in there for a Texas League single dropping in front of the right fielder and right behind Sprick over at second. So to put another runner aboard for the Royals here with one away. So count will even up at one and one here. Things will even up at two and two here to Phillips, the batter. And then Phillips will be retired on strikes for out number two as Barfus will steal second. And it will be the cleaning up duty for Ryder Halligan here with the tying run standing out at second. Is Halligan going to take a cut at the first one and fall behind 0-1 in the count? Now, all of a sudden, it's going to be a one and two count to Halligan as he falls behind here. Looking to push Barfus in. Third next pitch going to miss inside and get Halligan to back off, even things up at two apiece. Next pitch to Halligan stays upstairs, and that'll run the count full here. And Halligan going to draw the walk. He'll be aboard, put runners on the corners here for the Royals with two away.
Well, with runners on the corners, we'll back it out, give you the wide shot here as it's going to be the first baseman, Stratton Moorhart, stepping in for the Royals. I think we finally got the scoreboard situated to a spot to where hopefully we don't see the numbers jump around too much on us and we can give you a consistent, proper score. It's the first pitch to Moorhart, going to miss outside. Some speed out on the base pass, a little dangerous here. The Royals can get a little frisky with it if they want to. We'll see how aggressive... Austin squared wanted to get on the base pass as Moorhart cuts at that one, evens things up at one apiece. That one he was trying to get a hold of. This one, something gets up in the air. It's one of those days today that it's going to blow around. It's going to cause some trouble. As Moorhart chases that one up again, falls behind one and two now in the count as Oberbrockling looks to get out of the inning. And he'll come set, wind, deliver again. Moorhart backs off that one. Things will knot themselves back up at two apiece. So Oberbrockling will check on the runner at third. A little nervous apparently about Barfus over there. And Moorhart instead going to take a cut at that one. Be retired on strikes for out number three. The Royals will come up with no runs on one hit. Two men left on and no plot errors in their half of the second. We'll be back in about 60 seconds after a word from our sponsors with top two action after this here on WinterWarriorsLive.com. Life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Look. Is your team or organization looking to improve their look? Are you looking for quality custom apparel with fast, friendly service from people you can trust? Then contact Apparel Works in Wagner, South Dakota. They can provide you with all kinds of options of screen printing or embroidery on your team's new uniforms or your office wear. Apparel Works is also the place to pick up your promotional items such as koozies, pens, and magnets. Contact their knowledgeable and friendly staff today at 605-384-3553 or visit their website at apparelworks. Do you have the right financial advisor to help you reach your goals? Ameriprise Advisors can create a personalized goal-based plan to help you prepare for whatever life brings so you can feel more confident about your financial future. Call Wealth Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, today at 605-842-3832. That's 605-842-3832. Office is located at 214 East 2nd Street, Winter, South Dakota, 57580. Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Mead Lump. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bull. Top two action getting underway as Brandis will lose his hat. I'm going to go up in the count. 0 and 1. As the third baseman, Bailey, going to step in for the Honkers. Second pitch going to be hit, put into play. That one's going out to center. Back, 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 and it will be hauled in out there. Nice job out in the center. Olsen going to track it down, get underneath of it. That one is kind of one of those situations where you get to see what happens when the ball gets up in the air. And so with one away... It's going to be Kuiper digging in for the Honkers. He's going to take a first pitch, put that one in play over to the right side. Going to be hauled in. Nice catch over there by Moorhart to bring it in. Loses his hat as well. And so quick two outs here for the Royals in the top half of the second. Going to bring up the second baseman, Hayden Sprick. First pitch to Sprick, going to catch the outer half. Going to be in there for strike number one with two away. Next pitch from Brandis on the way, and that one's going to go way behind Sprick. Evens things up at one and one. That 
Next pitch to Sprick. Going to catch the outer half, and Brandis gets the upper hand again. As we get, he goes up one and two in this count. And the next one, going to one-hop the plate and even things up at two and two. Deuces will go wild again here from Leahy Bull on the scoreboard. As Brandis wastes no time with the delivery, comes set, goes, and that one going to stay downstairs in the basement again. We'll load things up here with count-wise, and Sprick looking to walk it or knock it here and keep this second inning alive for the Honkers. Brandis going to wind deliver, going to be put in play over to the left side, fielded but foul. Halligan dug it up, but not in fair territory, probably for the best as Sprick shows off the wheels. Was basically two first before Halligan had even fielded that one. It was going to be a tough and quick throw needed to retire him. Instead, we'll come back and we'll do it again. Count remains full. Brandis will wind deliver again, bring this one home. Sprick going to put that one in about the same spot. Halligan going to get eaten up by it a little bit. Throw and cross the diamond, not in time, and Sprick will beat it out. Put a runner on first for the Honkers here in the top of the second, so it won't be a 1-2-3 inning. And due up next will be the first baseman Christensen for the Honkers. And Sprick going to be away with the first pitch. Throw down to second. Not going to be in time. He'll be in there with the stolen bag. And so now runner in scoring position for the Honkers. Could extend their lead. Instead, Christensen going to take a big cut at that one. And he'll fall behind 0-2 in this count. Next pitch from Brandis, going to miss outside. Take our count to one and two. Two away here in the top half of the second. As Brandis will check the runner, come set, deliver again. That one going to be in the dirt. Phillips going to have that one squirt away from him. And with the opportunity, Sprick will advance 90 feet. He'll move over to third. And so deuces again will go wild here. Another chance for Brandis to get out of the inning here before any damage gets done. The Sprick has shown off his wheels over there at first. This one going to be trouble, and that's the best swinging butt I think I've ever seen right there as Chris Christensen going to just get on top of that one, and it's going to end up I mean, pretty much exactly where you'd want to see that third baseline bunt. Christensen will reach a board and Sprick will come in to score to make your score now two to nothing honkers here in the top of the second. And the lineup card will flip over for the honkers, bringing back up the center fielder, Bailey. So he'll take that first one in there for a call number sh called strike. Next pitch to Bailey on the way. That's going to be running inside. Even things up at one apiece. And that one going to get a piece of it. It's going to be out into left, fielded. Schroeder going to get it in quickly, but it'll put runners on first and second with two away. And Dyke coming to the plate. Of course, Dyke going to get credit for the scoring run. Of course, it was a courtesy runner that came in for him as he was over on third in the top half of the first. As he reached on a walk in his first plate appearance. Brandis going to fall behind. 0-1 in this count. Or 1-0, oh, excuse me. Make it 2-0. Oh, as that one going to stay upstairs. Phillips going to take a second. Come out and try to calm down Dylan.
And as Brandis will step back in, come set, and deliver home. That one going to be low and away, going to get away from Phillips, and it will move all the runners up 90 feet. Count will go to 3 0 now. After the Royals, tough spot. You know, at this point, you almost could say a walk it could be one of those situations where it's not the most harmful thing, except for this is the heart of the honkers lineup. Is a Dyke going to get the walk and brings up Joey Foxley, the shortstop? And we will see time called in a meeting at the bump. The whole infield is going to come in, have a quick chat, try to rally behind Dylan here. I think we'll stay put. Do I don't think this is going to be a long visit, just one of those conversations, making sure everybody's head's in the right spot and paying attention, knows what they're doing with it. Yes, Foxley was retired in his first plate appearance. No, excuse me, Foxley was hit by pitch, that's right, in with his first plate appearance. Right off the helmet and back and into the screen. Kind of must have grazed the top half as Austin will leave the bump. Everybody will head back to their positions with 2 a, and we are ready for action. Brandis will go from the full here. He'll wind up, deliver. First pitch to Foxley going to be low. And Brandis will fall behind 1-0 in the count. One of those things, if you're the Royals fan, it's tough to watch. It looked like you were due for a quick inning. And you got Hayden Sprick beating out an infield single that kind of just sparked this quick little rally here from the Honkers. As Brandis, the second pitch of the at bat will miss low and in, and all of a sudden, it seems like you know, every like it's one of those things that everything's kind of falling apart. And then Phillips will try to back pick over to third. It'll bring in one runner, and it will just be one. Take our score to three to nothing. As Christensen will come in to score. And count will go to th Reno. And they're just going to put Foxley aboard, reload the bases. One of those things, probably not a bad decision. It gives you this Royals defense and you know, realistically, the e easiest play, anybody in the infield gets it, and you're just going whatever works best, and we'll leave it wide, keep it here. As duo up next, it's going to be Oberbrockling with a chance to help himself out here at the dish. It does fall behind 0-1 on the count. Second pitch from Brand is going to be just inside, even things up at one apiece. Of course, today is not exactly one of those days that you really want to have to pitch in either. Not really fun for anybody. Don't know what the wind's going to do to your breaking balls, just your ball, your pitches in general. Catch a nice bus, or nice draft, and all of a sudden your pitches got a couple extra inches of break on it. Is that one going to be put in play? Brandis going to not be able to come up with it, and... That will, Oberbrockling will be aboard, and it'll be another run for the Honkers, make it four to nothing. It's going to be E1. And that will bring up Kramveda to the dish. Kramveda struck out in his first plate appearance. And watch the first one stay downstairs and the pass ball. Okay, so now that the play is done, it's probably easier to explain than try to get it done as it was. 
It was a pass ball that didn't get far enough away from Quincy or a wild pitch. Either way, however you want to rule that one. Didn't catch the pitch, but it did get away, but not far enough that looked like the runner from third, was Dyke, was going to come in. Instead, realized he wasn't going to get there. He backtracked, backtracked, got Foxley to backtrack. It was only Oberbrockling, who didn't realize what was going on, gets caught running down. The tag gets away as... Phillips delivers to Morehart, can't handle it, and then all of a sudden it was Dyke coming back in, trying to score off of that, finally getting tagged out at home to, for the third out of the inning. That comes not before the Honkers come up with three runs on one hit, two hits, excuse me, and three winter Cologne errors. With that, for the Royals, it's going to be Brandish followed by Schroeder with Fisher in the hole. We will be back after a short word from our sponsors after explaining that one here on Winter Warriors Live with the bottom second action after this. Lumber is 100% employee owned. Mead Lumber is your source for building materials. Whether your plans are for new construction or updating your existing home or barn, Mead Lumber provides the know-how and the materials you need. Lumber, steel, roofing, siding, drywall, windows, doors, and so much more. Start to finish, Mead Lumber has what you need and want for your project. Mead Lumber is your hometown lumber yard. Stop in and see what Mead can do for you. 102 North Main Street in winter. The Insurance Center in Winter is an independent... Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Well, as I said, it was going to be a quick turnaround here from Leahy Bowl after the long-winded explanation of that last third out there for the Royals. And do up, it's going to be... Actually, it looks like... We're going to see Cam Anderson at the dish instead. Anderson going to take the first pitch. That one's going to get called on the outer half. He'll fall behind 0-1-1. Next pitch to Anderson, going to stay outside, even things up at one apiece. So with Anderson being subbed in, it's going to go Anderson followed by Schroeder on deck and Fisher in the hole. Third pitch to Fisher, going to be low and in the dirt. It'll take our count to two and one. Taking a piece of, a quick look at each pitcher's body of work so far. I mean, realistically, with not a lot it's to it yet. Over Brockling, 31 pitches. 14 for strikes. Is that one going to stay low? May take our count to 3 and 1. Oberbrockling has only faced five batters, has two walks and two strikeouts, giving up one hit. On the other side, just because I'm not sure if we'll see Brandis again, well, considering Anderson in batting for him. You know, it was for sure two innings pitched from Brandis, gave up two hits, four runs, only one of those runs being earned, had three walks and a strikeout, and did have two wild pitches and a Hits batsman as Anderson going to ground that one over to the right side of the infield. It'll be fielded cleanly by Sprick for the 4 3 put out. Brandis. If we don't see him again, had 49 pitches, 25 of those for strikes, and faced 13 honkers. That's the first pitch to Aiden Schroeder. Going to be a swinging strike. And Oprah Brockling will take a moment, step off the rubber, collect his thoughts, and dig back in. As he winds, delivers. That one going to miss low and away, evening things up at one apiece. As Oberbrockling will do it again. Here comes the third pitch of the at-bat to Schroeder. He's going to try to check it. I'm going to say he went. And it'll now, because of it, Schroeder will fall behind. One and two. As Oberbrockling not going to waste a lot of time on the rubber. Really getting there, getting set, and delivering. 
And that pitch, though, going to miss and even things up at two apiece. And Ober Brockling is ready to go again. Here we go. At two and two. And that one going to ring up Schroeder for what they called strike number three. Bring up Peyton Fisher, the second baseman, next for the Royals. Looking to get something rolling here in the bottom of the second. As Fisher will dig in. Oprah Brockling will wind and deliver quickly. That one going to be an upstairs strike. As Fisher will fall behind. 0-1 in the count. Second pitch from Ober Brockling stays upstairs, evening things up at one apiece. Third pitch of the AB calling strike on the outer half and takes our count to one and two. And Fisher gonna cut at that one, but not gonna be able to tie him up. Ober Brockling correctly. He'll go down on strikes, and the Royals will come up with no runs on no hits, no plat errors, and do up for the Hawkers. It's going to be Bailey followed by Kuiper with Sprick in the hole. We'll be back in 60 seconds here from Leahy Bowl with more action of Royals baseball after a word from our sponsors. Penn and Insurance Agency affiliated with many fine companies representing all types of insurance. They're able to provide you with a no obligation comparison of your auto, home, business, crop, farm, life and health insurance needs. Since they have access to so many companies, they have the ability to offer you the best possible coverages at the most competitive rates. For all of your insurance needs, it's the Insurance Center in Winter, White River, Platte, Burke and Valentine. For over 130 years, Bank West has earned long-term customer relationships by continually adapting to current customer needs while never losing touch with its South Dakota roots. With all our branches and our corporate offices firmly rooted in South Dakota, you can count on Bank West for solutions and service backed by hometown values. We've been there and we'll be there. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Learn more at bankwest-sd.bank. Member FDIC. Give it off to Cece, gliding to the basket, out to free Jay Hayes, good! And Eric Lemon wants to stop the music. Explore the 2023 Lincoln Navigator at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Every time you approach your Lincoln, you'll receive a re-carpet welcome. Twin turbocharged 3.5 V6 engine with auto start stop technology, you'll travel confidently with technology that meets all your needs. Now you can get the 2023 Navigator for 5.9% at 72 months. Stop in to see the full vehicle lineup at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Capital City Ford in Pierce, South Dakota. Computers and more, located at 27786 311th Avenue. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl Top 3 Action. I was actually incorrect there with the batting order for the Honkers as it comes up. It was Ashton Crumveda leading off, followed by Bailey with Kuiper in the hole. Current count. Knotted up at two and two, and some defensive changes here for the Royals as it goes to a full count. It's going to be Barfus now on the bump. Phillips will stay put. Morehart stays put. Cam Anderson in at second. Of course, he came in for Brandis. Fisher moves from second to third. Halligan moves from third to short with Barfus coming in, and then the outfield remains the same from left to right. It's Schroeder, Olsen, and McKenzie. So the count will remain full here to Crumbeta. And Crumveda will be retired on strikes for out number one. Brings up the third baseman, 
brings up the third baseman, Bailey. Bailey will follow the first pitch back and into the screen for strike number one. As Barfus will come set, deliver home. Second pitch going to catch the outer half, and it will be quickly an 0 and 2 counts to Bailey as Barfus finding his groove here. Barfus with the slow, methodical windup. That one going to miss it just in, and it will take our count to 1 and 2. Barfus will wind again. This one going to be down Broadway, and Bailey going to be retired on strikes. That will be two down for the Honkers here in the top of the third. And bringing up next for the Honkers... It's going to be Kuiper digging in the right fielder. First pitch to Kuiper going to be called for strike number one. Of course, now it's going to be interesting to watch kind of the difference between pitching. Is Kuiper going to cut at that one? Barfus, and I, not to say over Brockling is one of those guys that's going to quick pitch you, but very much his own pace is very fast paced. Well, if you watch Barfus on the bump, a little bit slower through all of those wind up motions, everything as he delivers home and Kuiper fouls that one out of play. Of course, it's something you look at with a lot of different pitchers, is their pace on the bump. Some of those guys just like to go, go, go. Some of them a little bit more time. As that pitch is going to stay upstairs. Barfus didn't like that one. Didn't like the look of it. Wanted a breaking ball. Just kind of stayed upstairs. Didn't really get the break he was looking for. And so he'll come set again with the count at one and two. That one going to miss just low. And he wanted that one. Was ready to get out of the inning. But instead we'll see a two and two count here. As Kuiper is set, so is Barfus. He gets a sign. Quick wind up this time. Delivers, and Kuiper's going to get underneath of that one. Send it out to center. Olsen going to get underneath of it, and he'll track it down, but lose his hat. That blows about 20 feet away from him. But in the top of the third, it was the Honkers coming up with no runs on no hits, no winter cologne errors, and nobody left on. So as we head to the bottom of the third... It's going to be McKenzie followed by a lineup uh, card flip as we go back to the top, followed by Olsen on deck and Barfus in the hole. We'll be back in 60 seconds after a word from our sponsors here on Winter Warriors Live coverage of Royal Baseball from Lakey Bowl after this. Obviously, your computer sales and repair in winter. The more is so much other than you can imagine. We are your local outlet for Winter Warriors sports apparel. We do screen printing and embroidery for your purple and gold attire. Stop in and check out all our gear on hand for you to wear at the next game. Call us at 842-9057 and see how we can design your company logo on all types of clothing. And remember, thanks for keeping it local. Shirley's Diner is located at 142 East 2nd Street in Winters, South Dakota. Come meet Martha 1 and Martha 2 and their friendly, courteous staff. Shirley's Diner is open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Breakfast is served all day and check out the Shirley's Diner Facebook page for all their daily lunch specials. All meals are made fresh and homemade every day. If you can't make it to the diner, they'll deliver. Just call 605-842-3903. Shirley's Diner serves customers from near and far and are a proud supporter of all school activities on Sports Ticket Live. It's easy to remember. There's nothing finer than Shirley's Diner. Winter Dental. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to action here from Leahy Bold. It's going to be the nine hole hitter, the double leadoff. Right fielder Carter McKenzie digging in for his first at bat here for the Royals. Looking to get some offense rolling as he goes up in the count 1-0. It's over Brockling's first pitch, misses outside. Second one going to be grounded out over to Foxley, and he's going to be there in time. And 
And so that will be the first base runner the Royals have seen. So that one's actually going to go down as an error, it looks like. And so this lineup card flips over. Olsen aboard and Kenzie getting down and dirty and in the second safely. And so now Olsen with a chance and a runner aboard and in scoring position here to help the Royals really kickstart this offense as the next pitch stays upstairs. Count goes to 2-0. Oh. Of course, that's kind of the hard part of the lineup. Olsen, not a very big, tall kid, should say. Of course, McKenzie, same way. Over Brockling kind of gets a nice shrinking of the zone as those two come up. And then all of a sudden you've got Aiden, Barf Aiden Barfus on deck. And that zone's a little bit bigger, but also a little bit more pop in that bat. So, so Ober Brockling kind of has to be a little bit careful here as he goes down 3-0. That one he'll finally, he'll find the zone between the, the shorter of the two, or the shorter two of the Royals. He'll find it again, and we'll see a full count on the way here. Nobody down, runner on second for the Royals. Ober Brockling had a, looked like it was going to be a little bit of a hiccup. It comes back firing nicely. Instead, Olsen going to see his second walk and his many plate appearances. And we'll have runners on first and second with nobody away. And bringing up the pitcher, Aiden Barfus, with nobody down. Barfus looking to get a hold of one here. It's over Brockling. Like I said, needs to be careful. And he's going to take his time, collect his thoughts, and come set. Deliver home. First pitch to Barfus stays upstairs. Second pitch to Barfus, going to be about that same location. Ober Brockling going to fa fall behind 2-0 in this count. And that one will catch the outer half. Catch that corner. Count moves to 2-1 now to Barfus. As Oprah Brockling checks the runners, delivers home. That one's low and in. And for the third time in four pitches, it's going to be missing the zone. So it'll be a three and one count here to Barfus. Opportunity for the Royals to load the bases here. As that one, Barfus going to get a piece of. It's drifting over to the right side, coming back over. And that's one of those things that there's no such thing as a routine foul ball, fly ball today. So Barfus will get new life. And so Oberbrockling delivers again. That one misses inside, and we will see the bases juiced here for the Royals in the bottom of the third. Bring up next the catcher Quincy Phillips to the dish. Phillips did have the K in his first plate appearance, but a little chance to help out the Royals here. And Phillips going to go up the middle, try to change my camera here. And one run is in. Make it two as Phillips comes up with the two RBI single. It'll keep runners still on first and second for the Royals. And the damage isn't done as the Royals looking to continue the onslaught here in the bottom of the third. Better adjust my scoreboard here. Must have got caught in the menus. Welcome back to the Meyer. 
And the first pitch to Halligan now, the shortstop, going to miss upstairs. Ober Brockling checks on Barfus out at second, comes set, delivers, and that one going to stay upstairs again. Suppose at least so far as we see time get called, and we'll see Dyke come out to talk to Ober Brockling. You know, sometimes you see these pitchers and they kind of, they get in their routines until they start getting hit, some runs scored, and then all of a sudden things kind of change. They start thinking about things a little bit more. It seems like that might be what we're seeing out of Oberbrockling here. And so that's what Dyke's going to try to avoid, try to calm him down and get him settled in here as the Royals still poised here for a pretty decent inning. Runners on first and second, as I said, with nobody away and a 2-0 and count to the cleanup hitter. Is Halligan going to launch that one, catch the outer half? So Oberbrockling Ober does settle back in here a little bit. Still clawing from behind here in this count. Pickoff attempt back to second. No throw going to be there, just kind of holding Barfus accountable. Now I'm going to be in the dirt and actually going to get away from Dyke behind the plate. It'll move the base runners up and put them on second and third now with a 3-1 and one count on the way to Ryder Halligan. Halligan going to take a nice healthy cut at that one. Saw the pitch he wanted, but couldn't time it up quite right. So we'll see the count go full here with runners on second and third for the Royals. As over Brockling winds delivers, and Halligan doesn't like the pitch, but gets called on the outer half for out number one. He'll be retired on strikes. It'll bring up the first base mark. First baseman, Stratton Moorhart, due up next for the Royals. Of course, on deck, it's going to be Camden Anderson, the substitute that's now playing second in place of Brandis. And then Aiden Schroeder, the left fielder, in the hole. As Moorhart going to go downstairs, chase at that one, and fall behind 0-1 in the count. Oberbrockling comes, delivers again, and Moorhart gets a piece of it, but fouls that one back and into the screen. You know, so he'll fall behind 0-2 here quickly. And that time, Moorhart will be retired on strikes, and the check swing did go. And it'll be Camden Anderson digging in. And his first plate appearance grounded out over to Sprick at second. Royals looking, trying to get that tying run in from second, represented by Phillips. As the pass ball will score one as Barfus comes in. Makes our score here four to three. Times gets called, and we'll see a runner come in for the catcher. That's now Phillips going to tr go trot back to the dugout, get his equipment back on. And so Anderson still trying to punch in that tying run. He'll take a cut at that one too far outside for him, and it'll even things up at one apiece. Oberbrockling doing a nice job finding that outer half and hitting it consistently, keeping these Royals batters honest. As Camden goes upstairs for that one, still behind. He'll fall behind one and two in this count now. And Anderson this time will be retired on strikes. And that comes not before the Royals score three runs on one hit, one error, and one left on. 
after a three complete. And plat four, Royals three. We'll be back in 60 seconds after a word from our sponsors here on LiveTicket.tv's coverage of Royals baseball from Leahy Bowl after this. Located at 911 Golden Prairie Drive, is proud to provide winter and the surrounding area with high quality, high tech, patient centered dentistry. Dr. Brad and the entire staff, including hygienists Michaela Smith and Sierra Hansen, are honored to have the opportunity to serve the good people of winter and the surrounding area with gentle, compassionate, and high quality dental services. For information on all the services they can provide you or to make an appointment, please call 605 842 1793 or go to winterdentalclinic.com. We connect people. Have been for 100 years or so. How we get that done? Well, that won't always be the same. But why we connect people? Not in a million years is that ever gonna change. We didn't build the communities that made South Dakota. No, we just brought them together. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl Action Club Ball. It's the Royals taking on Hawkers. We hit the top of the fourth and do up for the Hawkers. It's going to be Sprick followed by Christensen and then the top of the lineup. Unless the count to Sprit goes to one and two. Barfist going to get his sign. Cub set wide. Deliver. And Sprit going to get under that one. And it's going to drift out of play. Deep down that left field line. Count will remain one and two. As Barfistle will come set and wind to d deliver again. This time Sprick not gonna get a piece not gonna get a piece of it, but will be aboard safely on the drop third strike. And so with the runner aboard as strict Sprick reaches on the strikeout. It'll be Christensen and then the top of the lineup here for the Honkers in the top of the fourth. As Christensen shows bun. Barfus will step off, make sure his defense is set for the bunt. As he comes set, delivers, Christensen shows again. He's going to pop that one up. It's going to be fielded by Fisher at third. He'll catch that one and retire Christensen for out number one. And so Sprick will remain over at first and one away. And that's the lineup card flipping over, and it's going to be the center fielder Parker Bailey due back up. Parker with two, two at-bats. Has one hit and w scored. It's one for two. I believe it was a single. As the count misses high and in, takes our count to one and oh to Bailey. As Barfus will check on the runner, come set, deliver again. This one, Bailey takes a nice hack at. Not going to catch anything but air. Evens things up at one apiece. Yeah. 
Runner going to be going on the pitch. Throw down, going to be in time. But Halligan not going to be able to come up with it cleanly. So Sprick will be in there with the stolen bang. So count goes to two and two here to Bailey. That one going to be cut on. And he will be retired for out number two. And so that'll be the second strikeout here for Barfus this inning. And it'll bring up the catcher, Tanner Dyke, do up next. Couple pair walks for Dyke so far in the afternoon. Early evening, I suppose you could say at this point, as the first pitch is going to be low and away. The second pitch at the at bat here from Barfus kind of even things up as that one's a called strike. Next pitch from Barfus catches the inner half, and then we'll take our count to a one and two in favor of Barfus looking to get out of the inning here without any damage. He will do just that as he gets Dyke to retire on strikes. In the top half of the fourth, it was Platt coming up with no runs on, no hits, no one man left on, and no winter clone errors. As we go to the bottom of the fourth, it's going to be Schroeder, Fisher, McKenzie do up for the Royals. We'll be back after hearing from our sponsors on LiveTicket.tv. Hmm. Yeah. Another one. Hmm. Yep. Man, this town has changed. Yeah. About damn time. Schrader Electric and Control, located in Winter, is available for all your electrical service needs. With close to 40 years of experience, Brian and his crew can take care of all your electrical projects, residential or commercial. Schrader Electric works with new construction, remodels, and new additions. Call Brian at 605-840-8913 to get a quote or schedule your next electrical service. Schrader Electric and Control is a proud sponsor of the schools on the Live Ticket Network. When it comes to vehicle maintenance, we know you have a lot of options, but it can be hard to find an honest, reliable auto repair shop. That's where we come in, Hometown Automotive, committed to providing our customers with honest, quality service at a reasonable price. We use years of training and experience to provide you with the best car care possible. Hometown does oil changes, tune-ups, and computer diagnostics. We sell tires, batteries, and Schaefer products. We install engines, trannies, starters, water pumps, brakes, and much more. Call us at 842-1722 and let our experience be your advantage. Advantage. Meyer Ag Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to action here between the Royals and the Honkers. As we get underway here in the bottom of the fourth, it's Aiden Schroeder due up first for the Royals. It's, he'll fall behind quickly, 0-2 in the count. And so Schroeder going to watch that one go. Going to miss, and he will stay alive here. One and two of the count as Overbrockling gets him swinging at that one, and Schroeder will be retired on strikes. And 
brings up the third base, the current third baseman, starting second baseman, Peyton Fisher for the Royals. First pitch going to be a called strike there. Things even up here to Fisher at one apiece. Over Brockling, gonna get a sign and deliver. Fisher Egg is your Bex hybrids. Send that one over to first. Over Brockling, gonna field it in time and will retire Fisher for out number two. And that will bring up the double leadoff man, Carter McKenzie, up the dish. Reached on error in his first plate appearance, and this time he does get out of the way, so it'll just be a ball. Oh, one and oh, the count. Second pitch to McKenzie. That one going to be fouled back into the mid of Dyke. Evens things up at one and one. Third pitch of the AB stays outside and it takes our count to two and one. Brockling gonna miss high there, takes our count to three and one now to McKenzie. McKenzie Carter gonna take a big cut at that one. And we'll see the count go full here with two away. Over Brockling will get a sign, deliver. That one's going to stay high and away. McKenzie will draw the ba base on ball, base on balls, and the lineup card will flip over, bring back up Zach Olson. Olson on the day, pair of walks. It's the first pitch to Olsen stays downstairs. As Ober Brockling checks on McKenzie at first, delivers. That one stays low and in. That one low and in as well. So 3 and 0 count here to Olsen. And Olsen will receive his third walk of the day. And we'll put runners on first and second here for the pitcher, Aiden Barfus. Barfus this afternoon. He's technically one for one, but also with a walk there. Did have a single as well. First pitch to Barfus. Going to be calling strike. I believe it went single walks, and that's where he's at for the day. Started with the single. Should Just trying to get the order correct in my head here. Make sure my book's right. The second pitch to Barfus stays upstairs and it evens things up at one apiece. That's what it looks like. The arm is kind of fatiguing. Let's check out Oberon Brockling's stats here, at least from the bump perspective. It's the next pitch from Barfus on the way. Breaking ball going to be outside. Through three and two thirds, he's given up two hits, three runs, only one of those earned. Six walks with eight strikeouts. That was his 90. First pitch, 45 of those for strikes, and has faced 19 Royals as Barfus takes a big cut, even things up at 2-2. Two and two. 
as deuces go wild again here from Leahy Bull in the bottom of the fourth. And Oberbrockling will be set, delivered. That one stays downstairs, and we'll see a payoff pitch coming. <laughs> Runners will be moving with the action here. And that one will be another walk for Barfus to load the bases. We'll switch out to the wide cam here as it's going to be Quincy Phillips, another chance to punch a couple across. Last inning had the two-run RBI single. Looking to do it again here for the Royals to give them their first lead here from the bottom of the fourth. As over Brockling checks the runners, delivers, and Phillips takes the first one low and in. As Ober Rockling delivers again, that one called strike. Even things up at one apiece. Third pitch of the at bat to Phillips stays upstairs. Count goes to two and one as Ober Rockling's definitely showing signs of an early season arm hitting right around that 100 pitch mark. I think that's 98 there. As he gets that one to called strike, evening things up and sending deuces wild again. But the fatigue is setting in, just trying to get out of this inning here without any damage. Of course, if you're Phillips and Quincy, you're looking for the one you want still, trying to play some defense, going to swing, come up short. McKenzie not going to realize he's got to get home. And with the drop third strike, Dyke just going to step on home, and that will do it. Royals going to come up with no runs on no hits, three men left on, and no plat errors. We'll go to the top of the fifth after hearing from our sponsors here on WinterWarriorsLive.com. The seed dealer located in Winters, South Dakota. Meyer Ag is a family-owned company specializing in seed consulting and zone-based variable rate that services South Central South Dakota. Contact Trace Meyer at 605-842-5458 to learn more about Bex hybrids and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Meyer Ag in Winters, South Dakota is a proud supporter of all youth athletics and activities. No job is too big or small for the gang at h and Electric in Winter. Whether it's a simple task around the house, remodel, new addition, or new construction, we provide residential, commercial, and industrial heating, cooling, or electrical work in Winter and the surrounding area. We handle it all. Call 605-842-1117 for service or more information on your next project, big or small. h and Electric is your authorized dealer for train heating systems, too. Good luck in today's event. h and Electric is a proud supporter of all area student athletes and activities on Live Ticket TV. At American Family Insurance, we help protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after your dreams. For auto, home, business, and life, contact us today. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance, Life Mutual Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. No. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl. Top five action just getting underway here. Do up for the Honkers. It's going to be Foxley followed by Oberbrockling with Kramveda in the hole. Kramveda in the hole. A 
as the count will go to two and one against Foxley now as that one misses inside. Make and proof of how windy of a night it is here at Leahy Bowls. Camden Anderson has to go retrieve his hat from center field as it blows off his head. Foxley going to take a big cut at that one. Evens things up at two apiece here. And Foxley going to bloop that one out into right center. He'll be aboard with the single. And it will bring up Oberbrockling at the dish so far. Just been retired twice over two on the afternoon. Early evening, I suppose I should say at this point. As Foxley takes his lead over at first. Pitch delivered home and it will be fouled back and into the screen for strike number one. As Barfus will dig back into the rubber. I'll check on Foxley at first, get his sign, and it'll be a pickoff attempt back. Foxley in there safely. Another pickoff attempt back to get Foxley. Not going to be in time. He's in there safely. This time Barfus will deliver, gets the call in the outer half, and he'll be up 0-2 to Overbrockling. Another pickoff attempt over to Foxley at first, not going to be in time. As Overbrockling asks for time, This time Barfus will deliver home. That one going to miss upstairs. Count will go one and two as Overbrockling stays alive. And that pitch misses just upstairs. Evens things up at two apiece. Of course, Foxley, one of those athletes on the base pass that kind of just makes you double check, make sure things are going right as he's going to go. And he will be in there safely as the count misses, uh, or pitch misses, and count goes full now to Oberbrockling. So Barfus delivers home and will retire Obler Bockling on strikes for out number one. Brings up next the left fielder Crumvita. Crumbeta. Crumbeta on the afternoon, 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts as he digs in trying to evade that thir third one. First pitch going to be fouled off the handle. He'll fall behind 0 and 1 to Barfus. <laughs> Second pitch to Carmveda going to be low and away, and it's going to actually squirt away from Phillips, and Foxley will be in safely at third. As time gets called here. Looks like actually I missed it with the pitch watching. I think Barfus kind of rolled his ankle coming off the rubber there, caught a hold the wrong way, which, of course, not exactly what you want to see.
So as we kind of watch here as Barfus takes his time recovering, trying to make sure that ankle's good to go. It is a one-and-one -one count to Krim Veda. And Krim Veda going to be hit by pitch there. We'll put runners back on the corners as Foxley, of course, is standing over there on third. We'll keep an eye on the, of course, the runner on first, as he's more likely to go here. And with the hit by pitch, it's going to bring up Jai Bailey, the third baseman. With one away and runners on the corners here for the Honkers. Barfus will take his time, step off, and check the runner, make sure Cremveda doesn't get too aggressive on the base pads. As Barfus will wind deliver, that one going to be called for strike number one. As Bailey will get the sign. Big back in. Barfus will check on Cremveda first, excuse me, and wind deliver home. That one going to run too far inside, and after a couple hit-by-pitches here from Barfus, the bases will be loaded here for the Honkers in the top of the fifth. As due up next now for the Honkers, it's going to be Kuiper, the right fielder. Corners will be playing in here for the Royals. And middle infield looking to roll that double play as Barfus will s remain in that stretch. He'll wind, deliver. That one going to be up and under. If Phillips going to try to track it, not going to be able to get back in time. As Kuiper will stay live. Count goes to 0 and 1. And with the strikeout of Kuiper, that'll put two down. And bring up next Hayden Sprick, the second baseman. Was hit by pitch and has struck an out so far today. Also has a run scored. It's been a terror on the base pads for the Royals. He's got two stolen bases as well. First pitch, two strike. Gonna miss Sprick, excuse me, going to miss Sloan away. Barfus will take his time. Still kind of nursing that ankle a little bit, looks like. As he will get his sign deliver here. Sprick going to watch that one stay upstairs. And Barfus going to be digging in from behind. This account goes to 2-0. and oh. That one got away from him on the toss back from Phillips as well. A little bit of a moment with, you know, with Foxley. Definitely not a slow athlete by, you know, any terms. <laughs> Sitting over at third. Thankfully, Barfus kind of realized the situation, was able to realize what was going on, track it down, and make sure he held Foxley up. And after the foul ball from Sprick there, the count will move to two and one. Taking a look at Barfus's body of work, I think getting up there in pitches, that's 55, I believe. Through two and two thirds for him, he's given up one hit, seven strikeouts, no walks, no errors, no runs, no. Has faced 12 honkers. It does have two hits batsmen. A 
And uh, maybe not the best time to mention those two hits batsmen is make that three as Sprickle reach first on the hit pitch. And it'll make your score five to three here. Bases will remain loaded as it brings up the first baseman, Christensen. Christensen on the evening has one hit. Was an RBI as well and has scored himself. As Barfus Wines delivers, Christensen going to take a big cut at that one. Second pitch to Christensen, misses just low and outside. Evens things up at one and one. Third pitch of the at-bat, going to stay upstairs. Barfus a wine deliver again. That one called on the outer half. Deuces goes wild here in the top of the fifth. As Barfus gets his sign, we'll deliver again. And Christensen going to chase that one downstairs. So a little bit of blood in the water there for the honkers, but only able to come up with one run on... One hit, no errors, and stranding three after four and a half. It's the Honkers five, Royals three. We'll be back in 60 seconds after a word from our sponsors here on WinterWarriorsLive.com. Stop by your hometown grocer, County Fair, now in Winter and Platte. Same friendly faces with a brand new name. County Fair is a fourth generation family owned business based in South Dakota. They offer friendly service and the freshest food at great prices. County Fair carries premium certified Angus beef, locally grown produce, and much more. Shop County Fair in Winter and Platte, the friendliest store in town. Wow, Bill, you're walking so much better. What did you do? Well, I got so tired of the pain and nearly fell. And one of my friends recommended physical therapy at Winter Physical Therapy. And you know what? My back also stopped hurting. Huh. So how did you get started? My doctor wrote me a referral, but that's not always needed. Turns out you always have a choice where you want to go. So why did you choose Winter Physical Therapy? I love to support our locally owned small businesses. And quite frankly, they give great personalized care. Winter Physical Therapy. Exceptional care. Elevate Agronomics is now added to Cal Grow to our seed lineup. Along with brands like LG Seeds, Sakota, and Westbred, we can find the best hybrid to fit your farm. When it comes to your chemicals, we can finance many of your chemical needs for 1.9% while still offering full cash discounts. Elevate is also your precision planting dealer with a meter stand and an expert on staff to help get your row units and planting equipment ready for this upcoming season. Give us a call or check us out at elevateagronomics.com. Elevate Agronomics, reach new heights. Shop local with Burke, Gregory, and Winter Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crews at the building centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top of the line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook or shop online anytime at buildingcentersd.com. Whether you're pregnant... Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl and Royals action here as they take on the Honkers. We head towards the bottom of the fifth. It's after the top half of the fifth there. It's now a 5-3 to three Royals lead if you're just joining us. As Halligan's going to dig in. That one going to be grounded over to third. Throw going to be in time, and Halligan will be retired for out number one. Some defensive changes for the Honkers in that half as Oberbrockling just running high on pitch count. It's going to be Dyke on the bump. Christensen behind the plate now. Oberbrockling over to first. Sprick remains at second. Bailey to third. Foxley at short. Kramvita at left. Bailey in center. And Kuiper in right. 
With Halligan being retired, it's going to bring up the first baseman, Stratton Moorhart, here for the Royals. That's Moorhart going to watch that one in there for strike number two. He'll fall behind now in the count, dug into a deep hole. As he watches that one stay low and outside, signs of life, but still way behind, looking to start something off here for the Royals in the fifth. And he will be retired on strikes and tagged out. So with two quick outs here for the Honkers, it's going to bring up next second baseman Camden Anderson. Anderson going to take the first one high and in. Anderson will foul the second one back and into the screen to even things up at one apiece. Of course, it's made some good, had a good first plate appearance, made some solid contact, couldn't beat out the single. Second AB was retired on strikes, and that's been Anderson's days. He's now going to be down again, one and two, digging his way out of this hole, looking to stay alive and extend this inning for the Royals. And he'll take a hack at that one, but will be retired on strikes. So that's a quick one, two, three inning for the Honkers. And through five complete, it's Honkers five, Royals three. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Royals in the bottom of the fourth. Our bottom of the fifth, and we'll be back in 60 seconds with more action here on Winter Warriors Live. After hearing from our sponsors, I'd like to thank you all for watching and listening. Are planning ahead, you and your baby deserve a healthy start. We offer a wide range of services such as advocacy, health screenings and education, care coordination and car seat safety, participant empowerment, referral services, and fatherhood support. To learn more about Great Plains Healthy Start, visit greatplainstravelhealth.org or call one of our five service areas today. Brought to you by Great Plains Healthy Start, so that the people may live. Grossenberg Implement and John Deere have you covered to help you move forward for 2024. Now through May 31st, 2024, Grossenberg is offering you 10% off select sprayer parts. We know you spend a lot of time caring for your operation, and they're your partner. This promotion includes common repair parts like flow meters, hydraulic cylinders, and valves. For complete details to get 10% off select sprayer parts, go to Grossenberg.com or any Grossenberg Implement location. It might be time for you to strongly consider leasing bulls from Jorgensen Landing Cattle. Here's Cody. We'll get the bull to your place. Generally, we'll, we'll be able to get the bull picked up when you're done with them. So there's no reason for you to have a bull around your place for, you know, nine, ten months of the year that you don't need him. Um, he's just costing you money. He's eating feed. He's tearing up your corral. So so there's just no reason for it. Uh, it's, it's become very popular just, just in the fact that it's, it's convenient for people. Call 1-800-548-BULL. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. So welcome back to Leahy Bull as we get ready in the top of the six. It's the top of the order here for the Honkers as it's Parker Bailey digging in. Parker's afternoon so far, an early evening, has got one hit, one strikeout, and I believe a hit by pitch. Don't remember the third at bat there. Must have just been retired, I suppose, as he's going to go down 0-2 in the count here. And this is the third pitch of the at bat here from Barf is going to stay downstairs, and we'll see the count move to one and two. As Bailey looks to be the leadoff man here, not only in the sixth but just for this plant lineup in general. Worked out pretty well in the top of the first, and this time not so much as he's going to be retired on strikes for out number one. Bringing up next the pitcher, the new pitcher, was catcher Tanner Dyke. Dyke's evening of work has scored, has drawn two walks, has a strikeout. 
in only one official plate of it. it yeah, in one official plate appearance. It's the first pitch going to run inside on him. Barfus going to fall behind. As he winds up to deliver again. That one, going to see Daiki take a nice cut at, even things up, and put ones wild on the scoreboard. Snake eyes, as some would say. And that pitch from Barfus is going to be low and away. Takes the count to two and one. Barfus will take his time getting back to the bump, returning set. He's going to wind up and deliver home again. This one going to run inside on Dyke. Take this count to three and one. It was going to be a ball, and it looks like here as Dyke's going to reach on the walk. Kind of froze everybody up there for a second as nobody really know what to do with it. And with the runner on first, it'll bring up the shortstop now. Jo or always has been. Don't know what I'm doing. Getting ahead of myself. Joey Foxley at the dish. He's one for one with a hit by pitch as well as a base on balls. First pitch to Fox. They're going to stay downstairs and take count to 1-0. and oh. Barfus now 71, pitch, 70, just 70 pitches after that one. Runner going on the pitch. It's going to be blooped up to the right side. Phillips going to get underneath of it. Chance to double it up and we'll get the job done. So the unconventional double play takes care of business. As it's a, I think the official scorebook goes that'd be an F2 for Foxley. And then the 2 1 put out for Dyke for the double play. I don't know. I'm not a bookkeeper, but that's how I'm going to mark it down and we'll be back in 60 seconds after. Another word from our sponsors with the Royals half of the sixth in just a minute. Agriculture is like no other business, which makes Farm Credit Services of America like no other lender. Owned by the farmers and ranchers we serve, our customers have a voice in how we work, a stake in what we do, and share in our success. Discover a lender that works for you at Farm Credit Services of America. There's a lot of uncertainties in farming and ranching today, but one thing is certain. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell are your crop and livestock insurance specialists. Statewide agents have a background in agriculture and work hard to provide growers and ranchers with risk management plans and insurance coverage that fits their business needs. From hail insurance, livestock revenue protection, to multi parallel crop and revenue insurance, Statewide will help you with the right decisions. Statewide Ag Insurance in Chamberlain, Winter, and Mitchell. Locally owned, your dependable partner in crop and livestock protection and equal opportunity providers. Provider. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Miller & Associates in Platte, South Dakota, if auto owners make sense for you. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowls. We get underway here in the bottom of the sixth. It's the pitcher, Aiden Barfus. Oh, excuse me, about too many Aidens. It's Aiden Schroeder up at the dish. Heard Aiden from the PA and just kind of assumed, forgetting that Mr. Schroeder out and left is at the dish and where we were in the Royals lineup. Aiden's evening so far, 0 for, do, 0 for 2 day, but currently up in this count, 2 and 1. Does have a pair of strikeouts. See, so he watches that one miss outside. Count moves to 3 and 1. 
Looking for just one really good pitch here. If you're shorter in this situation, not going to get it. So he'll take the walk, and that will put runners, well, a the leadoff runner aboard for the Royals. Do up next going to be Peyton Fisher, the third baseman, followed by Carter McKenzie, the right fielder, and in the hole, well, the lineup flips over, and it's Zach Olson. This is the first pitch to Fisher on the way here from Foxley. Or Dyke, excuse me. Maybe I'll get it right. As Dyke delivers. Pickoff attempt back over to first to get Schroeder. Not going to be in time in that top right video player window. Fisher going to watch that one stay upstairs. Dis stairs. Did show bunt. Gets the defense kind of moving, trying to keep him honest. And now all of a sudden, because of it, you've got Bailey playing Short over there at the hot corner at third. Is Fisher going to square up again to go? That one uh, going to be fouled off, I believe, technically. Was showing. Was showing. So it's got to be a strike. No. Okay. Apparently pulled it back. And so Fisher will be aboard with a hit by pitch. Puts runners on first and second here for the Royals as Carter McKenzie, the right fielder, digs in. That's the first pitch from Dyke to McKenzie. Going to be low and outside. McKenzie on the day, drawn a walk and has a single. No, reached on error. As he'll square to bunt, that one's going to be fouled back. Of course, not a bad opportunity here for the Royals. Play a little bit of small ball, nobody out. Runners on first and second. And, of course, that tying run right there at first, only 90 feet away. Or, excuse me, 100, 270 feet away. Dude the math right here. Is that one going to be low and away? Gonna get away from Christensen. It'll advance the runners, and that puts the tying run 90 feet closer. And so now with runners in scoring position, McKenzie with the chance here to do some work. Going to take a big cut. He's going to foul it off, and things will even up at two apiece. So we see time get called. We'll see a pinch runner, I think, technically, is what this one would be in this situation. Not a courtesy runner. Uh, Calhoun's going to come in. So Fisher will come off. And McKenzie going to take a big cut there. He'll be retired on strikes as the lineup card flips over. Dyke will get his first out of the inning. And it'll bring up the center fielder, Zach Olson. As Olson digs in with three walks on the afternoon. Looking to help the Royals out a little bit with a nice cut there. Timing just not quite right. He'll fall behind. Oh, wouldn't one. As Dyke will quickly wind deliver. That one's going to be put in play over to the right side, fielded by Ober, Ober Prockling. Excuse me. He will be get the 3U put out there for out number two, not before the Royals do plate one. And now the tying run only 90 feet away. And 
that one going to squirt away from Christensen. And now everything gets tied up here in the bottom of the sixth. And it's a good thing we play seven. Maybe even some extras here, I suppose, from this one. Of course, we got another inning to decide everything. And so with Barfus at the dish, one for one on the afternoon with a single in his first plate appearance. Since then, a pair of walks. As he's going to go up in this count now, 2-0. and oh. Third pitch of the at-bat from Dyke to Barfus on the way. That one going to get called strike. Must have caught the upper half of the zone there. Looked a little high, but I am no umpire, especially not from my positioning up here. We'll leave it to the men in red. And with another strike, that one evens things up at two and two. This Dyke will deliver, and he'll get the punch out on the outer half. Barfus didn't like it, but not going to matter. So we'll get to the top of the seventh with a brand new ball game. Basically, let's start it over, play one inning at 0-0, zero, zero and see what happens. We'll be back in a minute after hearing from our sponsors who make everything possible here on Winter Warriors Live, and, and we'll finish this one out. Agrimax and West River Ag have been in the winter area for a combined total of nine years. We offer top-of-the-line services and inputs such as chemical, seed, fertilizer application, spraying, and agronomy services with a certified crop advisor on staff. We are a full-service business that is locally owned and operated. We look forward to continuing service to the ag community and cannot wait to help you with all your agricultural needs. Agrimax, shaping the future of ag. Early seed season is here. Litaw Seed carries Hefty brand corn and beans for their genetics, technology, and treatments. Hefty's corn has been very drought tolerant and an excellent yielding. We also have Enlist and Extendiflex soybeans for your choice in herbicide. With Dynagro, we're at the top of the South Dakota field trials for their sunflowers and milo. And with Millbarn, we're the leader in grass, cover, crop, and forages. Call 605-840-4591 for Litaw Seed, your source for corn to cover crops, soybeans to sunflowers, and all forages. That's six. The Winter Advocate is the exclusive newspaper of Trip County, serving Winter, Cologne, and the surrounding communities. Each Wednesday, you'll find the latest in state and local news, sports, job openings, classifieds, and all legal public notices. Call 842-1481 or stop down to 125 West 3rd to start your subscription today. Don't forget our deadlines, Friday at 5 p.m. for The Advocate and 12 on Fridays for The Rocket. The Winter Advocate is a proud partner of Winter Warriors Live and wish the Warriors and Lady Warriors success all this season. Easy Entrees is a locally owned business that specializes in take and bake entrees. We feature an assortment of frozen ready to bake options for you to choose from. All of our recipes are made with care and fresh ingredients so that you can have a healthy and delicious meal, allowing you to have more quality time with your family. Our menus change monthly. Just click on our banner ad at the sports ticket page to see our current monthly menu. Remember, dishing up dinner is as easy as picking up the phone and dialing 842-EASY for easy entrees. The right nutrition, animal health, and record management is key to having a profitable cattle program. That's why you want to work with the people at FarmCo. Who will Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl action as we get underway here in the top of the 7th. Basically a 0-0 zero zero ball game. Actually, let's call it what it is, and a 5-5 ball game as it's the starting pitcher for Platt. Now the first baseman, Caden, over Brockling at the dish. 0 for 3 on the evening. Is that one going to be just a bit inside? Is Barfus going to go behind in this count? 2-0. and oh. A couple defensive changes here for the Royals. It's Landon Calhoun coming in for Peyton Fisher. He'll be playing short. Halligan moving over from short back to his initial starting position at third. And that's pretty much it. Everybody else is still at the same spot. Still Barfus on the bump. Phillips behind the plate. Morehard at first. Anderson at second. And the outfield from left to right is Schroeder, Olsen, and McKenzie. Is that one going to be a called strike? Three and one the count. Make it three and two and things go full quickly to Oberbrockling. As Barfus locks back in, 
of course, kind of a tough situation for, I mean, I suppose mentally, uh, t more of a challenge and being the last out and then realizing you have to come back out on the bump and try to do the same thing to the other guys with a couple strikeouts, and he'll succeed with that one as he gets over Rockling on strikes for out number one. Bringing up next for the Honkers, the left fielder Ashton Crumbita. Crumbita. As Barfus will wind, deliver, come home. First pitch to Crumbita. Called strike. Second pitch could be swung on and missed. Zero is the number. It's Maddox Van Z at the dish, actually. That pitch is going to be slow and away, but still. It's going to be Barfus way up in this one. One and two the count. See he'll miss there. Another good miss outside. Evens things up at two and two. Now a little bit more work to be done here as Barfus tries to finish this one out. Of course, the other thing to keep in mind. Oh, nope. Pitch count not where I thought it was. I thought we were getting a little bit higher here for Aiden. That was only pitch number 78 and make it 79 with the swinging strike for Van Z. And that this will be Chai Bailey now up at the dish, the third baseman. As the first pitch to Bailey, going to be fouled back up and directly behind home plate. Out of play. Barfus, 82 pitches now. Of course, it could be something to keep in mind if this game does, you know, knock on wood. See extra inning time is where Barfus's pitch count ends this inning up at us. It's going to be Bailey lining that one out to center for the one-out single. Or two out single, excuse me. Forgot about the second strike out there. So with two down and a runner on first. Two up next, it's going to be the right fielder, Kuiper. As Barfus checks on Bailey at first, winds delivers. First pitch is going to be called strike on the outer half. Kuiper's evening, tough 0 for 3. Realistically, not a lot of hits for either team here as Platt's only got four coming into the top of the seventh. Winner Cologne with only two. The big difference right now in this game, well, it's not really a difference anymore as this one's tied up, was the Royals gave up a couple errors in their half, home, in their half, well, Platt's half of the second inning. But then in the bottom of the third, it was a nice couple walks that helped couple RBIs come in with, with a nice single from Phillips that kind of read tied everything back up. Is Calhoun going to field that one coming in off the bench for this half inning? Throw it across and we'll see a 6-3 put out for out number three. So in the top of the seventh, Pat Platt comes up with no runs on one hit, no walks, no errors. And we'll head to the bottom of the seventh where for the second time this season, the Royals have an opportunity to walk this one off. We'll be back to see if they can do it in just the seven scheduled innings or if we play it free baseball after hearing from our sponsors on LiveTicket.tv. Take the time to learn your operation and help you grow your business. We are your full-service agriculture provider of feed, seed, animal health, farm, and ranching equipment built on terrific service. Get to know Farmco locally owned and serving you in Chamberlain, Platt, Winter, and east of Kimball at the Paragon. Visit us online at farmcosd.com. Farmco, Farmco, feeding, feeding your, your future. future. Core Cares helps individuals stay at home by offering caregiving, nursing, and medical alert systems in over 55 communities in South Dakota. Specializing in tasks like bathing, meal prep, and medication setups, our well-trained staff delivers exceptional care. We invest in our team through customized training and comprehensive benefits. To learn more about job opportunities or services, visit our website at corecares.com. 
Core Cares, proudly serving our community. Core Cares helps... Eklund Tax Service, located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl in the bottom of our regularly scheduled game. Of course, the reason I say that is knotted up at 7 in the last inning. We may see free baseball knocking on wood. Of course, nobody really wa necessarily wants to see it. Well, everybody wants to see it. As Phillips is going to get the leadoff single... And then we are going to rule that one a single up here in the press box. So Phillips will be aboard. And that's the winning run now on the base pads. As Ryder Halligan comes up, no outs. Of course, only the second batter of the inning. Of course, if we got a leadoff man, Caleb, and he gets a single, there's going to be no outs. But it will be Halligan playing third again, followed by the first baseman, Stratton Moorhart, on deck, and Cam Anderson, the second baseman, in the hole for the Royals here. First pitch to Halligan, going to go upstairs, going to get a little bit away from Christensen, but not far enough away for Phillips to do anything too aggressive on the base pads. As Phillips will take his lead, Dyke going to check on him over at first, wind home, Halligan going to get a piece of one, grounded down third baseline, but it's going to be foul. If you could straighten that one out just a little bit more, that one, that's one of those hits that realistically, if it stays fair, Phillips should end up at third afterwards because that's a tough play. Halligan could even beat that one out two first, and then you're sitting runners on first and third with nobody out. Of course, that's a tough one if you're Bailey. I might even debate sitting there and eating it. But instead... Phillips going to be picked off over at first, so one down, and the count one and one to Halligan. Talking too much situational things, I should focus on the game at hand, as now Halligan, base is empty to him, and never mind, he'll be on first. So we kind of just... I mean, I guess I really don't know how you want to describe it, but we're kind of in the same situation, just with one more out now on the board for the Royals. <laughs> yeah. so now it's going to be Stratton Moorhart up at the dish. And so now, Dyke going to deliver to Moorhart. And the first pitch is going to be a low called strike one. So Dyke will check the runner. Moorhart going to square to bunt. Going to pull it back. Runner going. Halligan trying to get there in time. And the throw going to get Halligan at second, so the Royals getting a little aggressive on the base pads. And two outs on the bases, and more hard at the dish down 0-2. Yeah. More hard going to watch that one stay alive as it goes low and away. As Dyke delivers again, More Hart thought about it, but didn't go. Count will go 2-2, two, two, and deuces go wild. Yeah. 
Morehart getting fouled that one off to stay alive as it goes out of play. As it sounds like we have a, and we do, a mosh pit of kids trying to get that dollar, courtesy of the foul ball sponsor here tonight. Didn't catch who it was at Leahy Bowl. As we'll do it again, Dyke trying to get more hard out again. That one, he's going to pull way left. Foul out of left field. And Morehart stays alive. Count remains two and two with two away. And the wild pitch there. Going to take us full. Dyke will wind deliver again. Morehart goes upstairs after that one, and he'll be retired on strikes. So seven wasn't enough. We'll see some free baseball here from Leahy Bowl before, of course, still have the JV game on deck, weather permitting, as it's starting to come and get a little dark out here. But let's focus at the task at hand and finish the varsity game here. So we go to the top of the eighth, and we'll be back after hearing a little bit more from our sponsors who make this possible on WinterWarriorsLive.com. Do you have a pest problem? Got bats, ants, termites? Family owned and operated, Olson's Pest Technicians have had over 50 years experience taking care of pest problems in places across South Dakota, Nebraska, and Iowa. Utilizing brilliant methods such as Centricon bait stations for termites and Vicane treatment for bed bugs, there's no pest too tough for Olson's Pest Technicians. If you have pest problems, call 800 Kill Bugs. Do you have a... Lucky for us, life is full of choices, big and small. They define us, make us who we are. And when it comes time for you to choose a car, home, your next big adventure, or start a new business, Farmers Union Insurance has the variety of coverage options to protect each perfect moment. Farmers Union Insurance. Contact your local Farmers Union Insurance agent today. Lucky for us. Is your team or organization looking to improve their look? Are you looking for quality custom apparel with fast, friendly service from people you can trust? Then contact Apparel Works in Wagner, South Dakota. They can provide you with all kinds of options of screen printing or embroidery on your team's new uniforms or your office wear. Apparel Works is also the place to pick up your promotional items such as koozies, pens, and magnets. Contact their knowledgeable and friendly staff today at 605-384-3553 or visit their website at apparelworks.com. Do you have the right financial advisor to help you reach your goals? Ameriprise Advisors can create a personalized, goal-based plan to help you prepare for whatever life brings so you can feel more confident about your financial future. Call Wealth Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, today at 605-842-3832. That's 605-842-3832. Office is located at 214 East 2nd Street, Winners, South Dakota, 57580. Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC. Member FINRA and SIPC. Mead. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. So, welcome back to Leahy Bowl as we start the free baseball and head to the top of the eighth. Tayton Sprick leading things off. Count is currently two and two. As Barfus looking to start things off with a K. And he will succeed, and Sprick will go down on strikes. Bringing up next for the Honkers, it's going to bring up the new catcher, Christensen, who started the day off at first. Christensen, one for three on the afternoon. Of course, the big number right now to keep an eye on, I suppose, at this point for the Royals is the pitch count of Aiden Barfus, currently at 92 pitches after that. Okay. So that first pitch will miss low and away. Second pitch to Christensen, going to miss low as well. Count goes to 2-0. Oh. 
Barfus will start his wind up here, deliver home. Christensen going to take a nice cut at that one, going to come up with nothing but air. And That one going to catch the outer half, evening things up at 2-2, two and two, and Barfus looking for another K here. And we'll give you a nice little roundup of what his body of work is so far as he comes set and delivered, and we'll do it after this pitch. And he will get Christensen retired on strikes for out number two. Barfus is evening pitching well, five and two-thirds at this point. Of course, it started with Brandis for the Royals. Had two complete innings, gave up two hits, four runs. One of those earned three walks and a strikeout. Barfus came in there at the top of the third and has pitched five and two-thirds since. Has given up two hits, one run. It was earned. Has one walk and 13 strikeouts. Barfus has faced 23 honker batters. So 97 pitches, 59 for strikes. As we make it 98 for 59 after that one. <laughs> has hit three batsmen. Looking at the other side, pitching-wise, I suppose we might as well, since we're talking pitchers, look at honker action as the count goes to 2-0 here. Two, two and oh. It was Oberbrockling started things off, and had four innings pitched, gave up two hits, three runs, one of them earned, had the seven walks, so that one's a called strike, and Oberbrockling had nine strikeouts. Coming in in relief was Dyke, who has pitched three innings, has given up one hit, two runs, both of them earned, has one walk and five strikeouts. So strikeout totals for both teams, 14 apiece. Walks the difference for Platt with eight of them to winners four, but then winners three errors makes up for the difference, and that's how we end up tied at five. So that one misses low and in. We'll see a full count here to Bailey. Looking at everything else, it's Dyke has pitched 45 pitches, 27 of them for strike. Overbrockling had 99 for 99 pitches, 49 of them for strike. Overbrockling faced 21 Royals. Dyke has faced 11 so far. That one going to be put in play, going to go foul. Dyke has hit two batsmen as well to round out our pitching breakdown here. Is Bailey going to stay alive again, fouling that one back into the screen? As now Barfus will wind up again, looking to get out of the top of the eighth here. And he will succeed. That one goes down Broadway. That's pitch 105 for Barfus. And through eight and a half, seven and a half, and it's still 5-5, five, five, and the Royals with another opportunity to do what they did the other night with another walk-off victory here. We'll see if they can get it done after a word from our sponsors here on WinterWarriorsLive.com. Lumber is 100% employee-owned. Mead Lumber is your source for building materials. Whether your plans are for new construction or updating your existing home or barn, Mead Lumber provides the know-how and the materials you need. Lumber, steel, roofing, siding, drywall, windows, doors, and so much more. Start to finish, Mead Lumber has what you need and want for your project. Mead Lumber is your hometown lumber yard. Stop in and see what Mead can do for you. 102 North Main Street in Winter. The Insurance Center in Winter is an independent insurance agency affiliated with many fine companies representing all types of insurance. They're able to provide you with a no obligation comparison of your auto, home, business, crop, farm, life and health insurance needs. Since they have access to so many companies, they have the ability to offer you the best possible coverages at the most competitive rates. For all of your insurance needs, it's the Insurance Center in Winter, White River, Platte, Burke and Valentine. 
For over 130 years, Bank West has earned long-term customer relationships by continually adapting to current customer needs while never losing touch with its South Dakota roots. With all our branches and our corporate offices firmly rooted in South Dakota, you can count on Bank West for solutions and service backed by hometown values. We've been there and we'll be there. Bank West. Convenient. Connected. Committed. Learn more at bankwest-sd.bank. Member FDIC. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. So back to action here in the bottom of the eighth from Leahy Bull. It's the Honkers and the Royals knotted at five. Landon Calhoun at the dish leading things off. He's going to take one over to shortstop. Foxley is going to make the play for the 6-3 putout. Oh, Anderson, thank you. <laughs> So that was Schroeder grounding out to Foxley for the 6-3 put out. And now, wait. oh, <laughs> try this one more time. Anderson grounding out with the 6-3 put out, bringing up now Aiden Schroeder with Landon Calhoun in the hole. Is that one to be blooped out to center? And Schroeder retired with the F8 put out. And with two down, it'll bring up Landon Calhoun, the shortstop. That's Calhoun going to take a cut at that one. Fall behind 0-1 in the count. Second pitch going to be a called strike on the inner half. And Calhoun will go down on strike, so we're going to play a full game here as we go to the top of the ninth. We'll see what the, the Royals have up their sleeve, and we'll be back after hearing a word from our sponsors with top nine action after this. Explore the 2023 Lincoln Navigator at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Every time you approach your Lincoln, you'll receive a re-carpet welcome. Twin turbocharged 3.5 V6 engine with auto start stop technology, you'll travel confidently with technology that meets all your needs. Now you can get the 2023 Navigator for 5.9% at 72 months. Stop in to see the full vehicle lineup at Capital City Ford in Lincoln. Capital City Ford in Pierce, South Dakota. Computers and more, located at 27786 311th Avenue, is obviously your computer sales and repair in winter. The more is so much other than you can imagine. We are your local outlet for Winter Warriors sports apparel. We do screen printing and embroidery for your purple and gold attire. Stop in and check out all our gear on hand for you to wear at the next game. Call us at 842-9057 and see how we can design your company logo on all types of clothing. And remember, thanks for keeping it local. Shirley's Diner is located at 142 East 2nd Street in Winter, South Dakota. Come meet Martha 1 and Martha 2 and their friendly, courteous staff. Shirley's Diner is open seven days a week from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Breakfast is served all day and check out the Shirley's Diner Facebook page for all their daily lunch specials. All meals are made fresh and homemade every day. If you can't make it to the diner, they'll deliver. Just call 605-842-3903. Shirley's Diner serves customers from near and far and are a proud supporter of all school activities on Sports Ticket Live. It's easy to remember. There's nothing finer than Shirley's Diner. Winter Day. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. 
Back to action here from Leahy Bowl, top of the ninth. Yes, you heard it right, top nine. It's scheduled for seven, and we're playing a full one. And now on the bump for the Royals, it's going to be Ryder Halligan with Quincy Phillips still behind the plate. Morehart still at first, Anderson at second. The change goes straight swap, Halligan for Barf at third, and Calhoun still at short. The, the outfield still remains, Schroeder, Olsen, McKenzie. And do up for Platt here to start off the ninth. It's going to be Dyke, your pitcher, currently on the bump, started at catcher. And he is actually, it's a 2 2 count, and, and that one's going to be popped up. Phillips going to try to track this one down. And so count remains two and two to Dyke. Dyke going to get underneath another one. This one drifting over towards second. Anderson, no such thing as a routine fly ball tonight, but he's going to track that one down and retire Dyke for out number one. And, and brings up next Joey Foxley for the Honkers. And Foxley will be put on first after being hit by pitch. And that'll bring up the starting pitcher for the PGDCWL Honkers. The full name. I'm going to stick with Platt for anybody watching, but I figure I'd throw it out at least once. Caden Ober Oberrockling. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling. It's been a long game. Um, now playing first for the Honkers. He's going to take a cut at the first one there, fall behind 0-1-1. Overrockling 0-4 on the afternoon. Taking a look at it, making sure that it's not one of those golden sombrero situations. It's not 0-2 or 0-4 with just a pair of strikeouts. Down 0-2 in the count. Better give you the view of Foxley over at first. He's leaning. Looks like he wants to go. Not going to. Is that pitch going to be low and in to Oberrockling? Fox is going to be going on that pitch, but it's going to be fouled back and into the screen, so he'll head back over to first. Count remains one and two. Did he go? Nope. Oberrockling did not. And so count moves to two and two. Pickoff attempt to get Foxley. Look good, but not in time. So we'll go ahead and pitch again. That one's going to run inside on Old Barockling, and we see the count go full. Oberrockling going to put that one in play. Schroeder going to track underneath of it. He'll make the play. So for out number two. And so with the double up there from Foxley, we'll head to the bottom of the ninth. 
be back to see if the Royals can punch this one out before some weather comes at us. We're starting to see a little bit of rumbling as go on. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor here on WinterWarriorsLive.com. Mantle, located at 911 Golden Prairie Drive, is proud to provide winter and the surrounding area with high-quality, high-tech, patient-centered dentistry. Dr. Brad and the entire staff, including hygienists Michaela Smith and Sierra Hansen, are honored to have the opportunity to serve the good people of winter and the surrounding area with gentle, compassionate, and high-quality dental services. For information on all the services they can provide you or to make an appointment, please call 605-842-1793 or go to winterdentalclinic.com. We connect people. Have been for a hundred years or so. How we get that done? Well, that won't always be the same. But why we connect people? Not in a million years is that ever gonna change. We didn't build the communities that made South Dakota. No, we just brought them together. Your local Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl, bottom of the ninth underway. It's the double leadoff man coming up for the Royals. As Carter McKenzie, the right fielder, digs in. McKenzie 0 for 2 on the day. With a, I know at least a couple walks. We'll double check. One walk. Did score. And a strikeout. He's up 3 0 in this count. Going to take that one 3 0. <laughs> and right down the pipe, make it 3 and 1. Another nice shot there. That one called strike number two. And McKenzie going to get rung out on the outer half for out number one. So the lineup card will flip over and brings up the leadoff batter, Zach Olson, up to the dish. It's Olson going to waste no time, and that one goes right back to Dyke, and he's going to field that one himself for out number two. Bringing up next, Barfus, Mr. Aiden Barfus, the short third base shortstop, I believe. Still, no, third baseman. Got to be right. I'm going to keep spitting out positions until I get it right, but I do believe he's over at third now. And that's the first pitch to Barfus, low and away for ball number one. Second pitch to Barfus, big cut. Not going to be able to time that one quite up. It evens things up at one apiece. Barfus going to take another big cut, fall behind one and two now in the count. Barfus going to watch that one low and away, evening things up and sending deuces wild on the scoreboard. Of course, no, it's not a typo. We are in the bottom of the ninth. If you're just tuning in, still 5-5 five five here. Both teams kind of hitting a stalemate for scoring in these last couple innings. And you know what? Why not play one more? Let's go double-digit innings, 10 on the way. We'll be back after another quick word from our sponsors here on Winter Warriors Live and be back with the top of the 10th after this. Cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today. 
and let us help you own every day. Hmm. Yeah. Another one. Hmm. Yep. Man, this town's changed. Yeah. About damn time. Schrader Electric and Control, located in Winter, is available for all your electrical service needs. With close to 40 years of experience, Brian and his crew can take care of all your electrical projects, residential or commercial. Schrader Electric works with new construction, remodels, and new additions. Call Brian at 605-840-8913 to get a quote or schedule your next electrical service. Schrader Electric and Control is a proud sponsor of the schools on the Live Ticket Network. When it comes to vehicle maintenance, we know you have a lot of options, but it can be hard to find it. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bull Top 10 action just getting underway, and it's Maddox Van Z leading things off for the Honkers with a leadoff single and then extending that single into a to like to second after... The Royals took some time bring, getting that one in. And so it's going to be Bailey next up at the dish with a run, the runner in scoring position. It's almost like we started this one with major league rules, I suppose. We'll runner on second. The only thing we're missing is the out, I suppose. As we dig back in, Halligan pickoff attempt there towards second. Not going to be able to get Van Z, so he'll deliver home. First pitch called strike number one. Next pitch on the way. Going to be outside to Bailey. Close, but just now. Two and zero, the count. Third pitch going to stay upstairs, and it's quickly three and zero. Doing our best to work with our scoreboard here. The count will go to three and one. And now we've got runners on first and second here. Nobody out here at top of the tenth for the Honkers. As time gets called, we'll see Calhoun come out to talk to the boys. So after time gets called, we turn back to action. Calhoun takes his time getting off, and we go. Do up next for the Honkers. It's Kuiper with nobody out and runners on sec first and second. He's going to square up to Bunt, lay it down nicely. Halligan not going to have a play anywhere, so the bases are going to end up juiced. And that's going to be a single for Kuiper. Now with the bases loaded, it's going to be Hayden Sprick with a chance to retake the lead that we haven't seen either team have since the sixth inning here. And Sprick going to take a cut at that one. We're going to leave it wide so you can see all the actions on the base pass. Of course, Royals defense playing in, realizing they got to go home with it with any ground ball. Sprick goes upstairs. Going to go down 0-2. If there's an actual crackdown. 
And Sprick will go down on strikes for out number one. Bases remain loaded. And it's going to be Christensen up next. Christensen does have a hit in an RBI earlier this game, but also has a pair of strikeouts. So it's kind of, let's see what's going to happen as Halligan overextends that one. Nice save by Phillips behind the dish to save that one. And that could have almost been a wild pitch for that run to come in. Instead, Halligan will, will go from the windup, deliver again. That one going to be cut on and missed from Christensen, evening things up at one apiece. Another big cut from Christensen. And he'll go down one and two in the count. Is Halligan going to come set wide and deliver again? That one misses just outside, low and away, evening things up two and two. So we'll do it again. Halligan delivers. Christensen pokes at it, stays alive, and fouls that one off. And Christensen going to cut at that one, go down on strikes for out number two. And that will flip the lineup card over and bring up Parker Bailey. Bailey in five plate appearance has one hits, three strikeouts, and has scored a run. And Bailey going to bloop that one back out for strike number one. Second pitch going to miss just outside, evening things up, one apiece. As Halligan going to go quickly again, delivering to Bailey. That one put in play, going to go out of play. Put in, put up, but out of play. Count goes one and two now to Bailey. Halligan looking to get out of a jam and give the Royals another chance here in the bottom of the tenth. So that one fouled off. So now we're going to go quickly again. We'll see another pitch. And that one misses just outside. Evens things up at two apiece. And there's the strikeout. And so we go to the bottom of the tent, trying to get this one in before the weather cuts us off. We'll be back in probably only about 30 seconds hearing from our sponsors. Give you one quick one. Be back up with the bottom of the 10th where I don't know where we're at in the order, I suppose, for the Royals. I know it's up top. Oh, we'll find out when we get there. Until then, here's our sponsors. Honest, reliable auto repair shop. That's where we come in. Hometown Automotive. Committed to providing our customers with honest, quality service at a reasonable price. We use years of training and experience to provide you with the best car care possible. Hometown does oil changes, tune-ups, and computer diagnostics. We sell tires, batteries, and Schaefer products. We install engines, trannies, starters, water pumps, brakes, and much more. Call us at 842-1722 and let our experience be your advantage. Meyer Ag is your Bex Hybrids seed dealer located in Winters, South Dakota. Meyer Ag is a family-owned company specializing in seed consulting and zone-based variable rate that services South Central South Dakota. Contact Trace Meyer at 605-842-5458 to learn more about Bex Hybrids and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Meyer Ag in Winters, South Dakota is a proud supporter of all youth athletics and activities. No job is too big or small for the gang at h and Electric in winter. Whether it's a simple task around the house, remodel, new addition. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl and bottom 10th. Yes, bottom 10th if you're just joining us. It's Quincy Phillips at the dish trying to beat the weather. Counts currently 2-0 after that one misses on the bump for Bo's better set, actually, even the, the defense here for the, on the Honkers. It's been a while. Stike on the bump. Christensen behind the plate. Over Brockling. Over at first. Sprick at second. Bailey at third. Foxley at short. 
Outfield from left to right is Van Zee, Bailey, and Kuiper. Count 3-0 to Quincy, looking to, actually this is kind of a, we'll see how it goes, but almost a similar position to where we were just about three innings ago. It was Quincy Phillips with a leadoff single, I believe, in the bottom of the seventh. He ended up getting picked off. Halligan, who's now up at the dish, then was hit by pitch. And then, as he was trying to steal second, was actually thrown out at second base. And so and then it was finally a strikeout to end the inning to kind of close things out. So we'll see if history does repeat itself or what we do here is Bunt is going to get laid down but going to go foul. So count will go to 0-1. I mentioned it before, and I mean, guess considering it's a home game, I'll continue met mentioning it until we either call this one or it happens. Royals... Obviously won their first game on Friday night by via walkout. Opportunity to do it again here tonight. And that is, of course, at this point, realistically, unless the weather decides to change things or if the honkers can decide they want to take action and ruin that opportunity themselves. But as of now, it's an 0-2 count to Halligan in the bottom of the 10th, and we'll worry about that. Halligan going to watch that one go behind him. Phillips just not going to get too aggressive. Count goes to one and two. As a Dyke going to deliver again. Halligan takes a cut, and he will be retired on strike. Back big attempt to get Phillips, not in time, so with one out. The runner on first, the winning run on first base for the Royals. As due up next, it's going to be Stratton Moorhart, the first baseman for the Royals. It's Moorhart going to watch the first pitch stay upstairs. Dyke going to come set, check on the Quincy at first and deliver. Moorhart going to take a big cut, even things up at one and one. Moorhart going to ground that one over to shortstop. Foxley going to come up with it. And we're going to see a double play for out number three. We'll see what the umpires want to do, but at least as of now, it looks like we'll go to the top of the 11th. <laughs> and we'll be back after we're sponsors here and see, yeah, we're, looks like we're going to play 11 at least. Our new construction, we provide residential, commercial, and industrial heating, cooling, or electrical work in winter and the surrounding area. We handle it all. Call 605-842-1117 for service or more information on your next project, big or small. h and Electric is your authorized dealer for train heating systems, too. Good luck in today's event. h and Electric is a proud supporter of all area student-athletes and activities on Live Ticket TV. At American Family Insurance, we help protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after your dreams. For auto, home, business, and life, contact us today. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. American Family Insurance, Life Mutual, Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Stop by your hometown grocer, County Fair, now in Winter and Platte. Same friendly faces with a brand new name. County Fair is a fourth generation family owned business based in South Dakota. They offer friendly service and the freshest food at great prices. County Fair carries premium certified Angus beef, locally grown produce and much more. Shop County Fair in Winter and Platte, the friendliest store in town. 
Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl again. This time, top of the 11th, and it's Tanner Dyke taking the first pitch, flying that one out to Olsen for the F8 putout. As we jump in, give you the closer shot after Dyke up. Next, it's going to be the shortstop, Troy Foxley. Talgan going to waste no time going with the windup. Foxley going to even things up with a big cut there. One's a piece. That one going to run low and in. Count goes to two and one. And count will move to three and one as Halligan misses outside there. And Foxley will be aboard with the one out walk. And it will be the first baseman, Caden Overbrockling, up next. As Foxley takes a modest lead over at first. First pitch down broad high for ball number one. Look good, but upstairs. Second pitch to over Brockling, gonna miss as well. Count quickly goes to two and zero. Make the count three and no now. As that one's going to be called strike number one, takes our count to three and one now to over Brockling. As he'll dig back in, Halligan going to come set quickly, check over on Foxley at first and deliver. Make it three and two, and Foxley is going to be in safely at second, looking for third, and that one's just going to eventually get just cut off and thrown in. So the three-two steal works out. And so Halligan will deliver to Oberbrockling, and he will be called out for the strikeout with the did go too far. After Oberbrockling brings up Maddox Van Z, the left fielder who came in, does have a nice single out to left for earlier. I actually can't really say earlier. I believe it was even just less last inning. Led things off. He's going to take another big cut there. Count evens up at one and one. And as Van Z can't tighten that one up either, going to fall behind one and two. And Halligan looking to get out of here without any damage. He'll miss that one upstairs. Good spot to miss. Count goes two and two, still on top, still with the opportunity to send the Royals to the bottom of the 11th with another chance to win. The first, got to get past Van Z, And not going to be able to do it there. Is Van Z going to do a nice job fighting it off, staying alive, and fouling it out of play? So after a quick step off the rubber, Halligan ready to deliver again. Van Z going to come up whiffing. So another strikeout, and we go to the bottom of the 11th, still tied at five, and the Royals with another opportunity to walk this one off after hearing from our sponsors on WinterWarriorsLive.com. 
Wow, Bill, you're walking so much better. What did you do? Well, I got so tired of the pain and nearly fell. And one of my friends recommended physical therapy at Winter Physical Therapy. And you know what? My back also stopped hurting. Huh. So how did you get started? My doctor wrote me a referral, but that's not always needed. Turns out you always have a choice where you want to go. So why did you choose Winter Physical Therapy? I love to support our locally owned small businesses. And quite frankly, they give great personalized care. Winter Physical Therapy. Exceptional care. Elevate Agronomics is now added to Cal Grow to our seed lineup. Along with brands like LG Seeds, Sakota, and Westbred, we can find the best hybrid to fit your farm. When it comes to your chemicals, we can finance many of your chemical needs for 1.9% while still offering full cash discounts. Elevate is also your precision planting dealer with a meter stand and an expert on staff to help get your row units and planting equipment ready for this upcoming season. Give us a call or check us out at elevateagronomics.com. Elevate Agronomics, reach new heights. Shop local with Burke, Gregory, and Winter Buildings. Welcome back to the Meyer Ag Press Box. Contact Trace Meyer, your Bex hybrid seed dealer, and see how Meyer Ag can make every acre count for you. Welcome back to Leahy Bowl. We have hit the bottom of the 11th now at this point. It's Camden Anderson at the dish for the Royals. Count evens up at 1-1 one one as that pitch from Dyke misses outside. Next pitch is going to hit that same spot and makes it 2-1. and one. <laughs> and that one's going to be a big cut from Anderson, evening things up at 2-2. Two and two. That one's going to miss outside, makes your count full. Anderson going to put that one in play over to Foxley at short. Throw across the diamond, going to be in time for out number one. Going to bring up Aiden Schroeder, the left fielder. Schroeder going to go on that one. Count going to fall behind now. 0-1 as Dyke gets on top. Taking a look at his pitching. Six and a third. And Schroeder going to get a piece of that one down the right field side. It's going to be blooping in there. And he's going to round, stay at first. And it's, it's Dyke with six and a third, giving up his second hit with that one. Two runs, both of them earned. Has two walks and nine strikeouts. That is 83, 84, and that's the magic number for Dyke there after that pitch. Pitch number 84, 85 on the way. That's going to be low and in the dirt. Second pitch from Dyke on the way. Going to be laced out into left field. Nice line drive single there. As Calhoun comes up with a clutch single, puts runners on first and second now for the Royal, and all of a sudden we've got a little bit of a spark rolling. This is where you have to nurture the fire and take care of these base runners. If you're the Royals, don't get too aggressive and just keep letting the bats do what they're doing at this point. Carter McKenzie coming up to the dish next. We're going to leave this one. Actually, we'll zoom this one in so you can get a little bit better view at what's going on behind home plate. First pitch to McKenzie stays upstairs. <laughs> Second pitch from Dyke to McKenzie on the way. Going to stay upstairs again. Count 2-0. Dyke going to miss outside there. Quickly a 3-0 count and 
I don't think I've ever seen a brighter red light in my entire life. There is not a chance. Carter McKenzie is going to swing the bat in this at bat, at this pitch right here. Almost wore it instead, but now we will jump to the wide shot because the bases are loaded. It's going to be Zach Olson, the leadoff man, with the opportunity to be the last man at the dish here. First pitch to Olsen, going to be in the dirt, overthrown from Dyke. Coming home is Schroeder, and he's in there. So in two games, it's going to be two walk-offs for the Royals. This one takes 11 to get it done, but doesn't matter how many you play. It's about the final score on the scoreboard, and it's going to be final, fi final score. The Royals 6, Honkers 5. I'd like to congratulate both teams because that was a well-fought battle. Don't know if we're going to see the JV game. <laughs> well, it looks like we might. They're, the boys are running out. I don't know if we're going to see this one get played. We'll, we'll let them be optimistic, but I don't know if that's going to happen. For now, we're going to sign off and see what's going on. Be back in just a minute if they are playing. If not, I'd like to thank you all for watching and listening to tonight's coverage. We'll keep you posted as time comes. <laughs> well, actually, we'll stay put for a little bit longer. We'll see what the coaches actually want to do. It's the lightning. I mean, you can't. Well, you, that one you might have actually been able, been able to see on camera. Lightning going off in the background, but we're still going to talk about trying to play this game. Seems a little goofy, but we'll see what they do. I do not get paid for a full game, even if it starts, because I'm already here on company time. I'd rather just not play it, Nathan. <laughs> And it looks like we're going to switch it over and we're going to play. I'm trying to keep you posted. I guess while we're waiting, I suppose I should just give final stats and I'll keep an eye out. Pitching for the... We'll start with the honkers. It was Ober Brockling to start things off. Four innings pitched. Gave up two hits, three runs. One of them earned seven walks, nine strikeouts. He had 99 pitches. And I believe he's going to actually, no, of course he's not going to take the loss because it was because it was Dyke with six and a third coming up with the loss. Three runs. All of them earned three hits, three walks, and nine strikeouts. On the other side for the Royals, it was a joint effort that goes a long way. It was Brandis to start things off. Two innings, gave up four hit it, two hits, four runs. Only one of them was earned. Three walks and a strikeout. Coming in in relief was Aiden Barfus, who then went six innings. Gave up two hits, one run. Only one of them earned with one base on balls and 14 strikeouts. And then it's going to be actually Ryder Halligan <laughs> getting the win. Came in, had three innings pitched, gave up two hits, no runs, had two walks and five strikeouts. For Brandis, it was 49 pitches total. For Barfus, 105, and Halligan had 55. Batting-wise, just some very, I guess, crucial looks at everything. It's Aiden Schroeder with a pair, at least going two for four. Um... Probably the most, I guess, best day at the dish for the Royals. On the other side, if I'm to pick out one player, I think I'd give it to even Maddox Van Z. Came in, had a nice just shot out to left, and then some good base running. Nice uh, performance there at the dish for him. Not that they get anything for it, but a nice pat on the back from me. And I think we're going to switch it over because I think we're going to play. 
So we'll be back in just a minute with JV action after this.